15 points in the Munster semi-final and uh, it ends here at the Gaelic grounds. Tipperary 4-23, Limerick 1-16. So Tip versus Waterford for the final and it's a final which so many of us are already looking forward to seeing. Uh, Waterford unbeaten as we've mentioned before here, really up against it now against this Tipperary side. Uh, how, how do you see that particular well, it's good, look contest? Look, it's hard to know after today. Waterford will come with a game plan, obviously, with Derek McGrath. Under-21 is very impressive again the other night. But look, at, um, we'll let today settle first and we'll have to have a think about it. I thought Limerick might win today, so it shows you what I know about it. Right, let's get some comment on that then. Shane McGrath is with Claire McNamara. Shane, congratulations. Uh, this was, I suppose, a win Tipperary really needed today. Yeah, massive, Claire. Massive for the group, you know. Last two years we've come here against the boys and, you know, there's never been anything in it. You know, today we worked really, really hard, really dug in, and we had a point to prove to ourselves more than anyone. You know, that, you know, we, we were a better team than what came out the last couple of years in the championship, and we're delighted for ourselves. But one man we're delighted for more than anyone, and that's our manager, Ian Roche. The amount of slack he's had to take the last couple of years. He's a great man. He's stuck by us, and no one else stood, and we're delighted to do it for him today and for ourselves. And did you feel that pressure within the camp after the last two years? You know, I'd be lying if we said we didn't, like, you know, but we kept it within ourselves, we kept it within the group. We trained hard. We prepared for nine weeks for this game since we lost the league semi final. All we're focused on was today. We're delighted we got over today. And now we're really looking forward to the Munster final in a few weeks' time. Tipperary, hugely impressive up, up front today. I'm sure, massive, sure. Look, all the boys want is the ball. We tried to get the ball into them as much as we can today. And look, the boys did the business then. You know, we're, it's all about team. When the team wins, everybody wins. The boys did the business up, day, up front today, and the boys did the back as well. We all worked hard as a unit, and Tipperary in the Munster final, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, I get the feeling this year that provincial success is very important to Tipperary. It's massive. Like, no, like you know, the last couple of years, nobody has any medal to show for all the work we've done. Every inter county player around the county knows the work we're putting in. We're putting in massive work not to show. We're delighted now we have a chance to get a medal and you know prove to ourselves that like, you know that we are a good team and you know that we're going to give it a good rattle this year. Yeah, you sent out a message today. You come up against Waterford though, they're on a very good run. Yeah, massive sure. We've seen them in the league semi-final. Very hard team to play against. Very well coached by Derek McGrath. And we we're look, we're under no illusions going down there playing them in the Munster final, but we're just delighted to be here. We really look forward to it. Well done, Shane. Thanks, Claire. Thanks very much. Okay, Claire, point made there. These guys, the Tipperary guys, are desperate for a medal. They badly want this Munster. Even after the league, league semi-final defeat to Waterford, you knew there was something rumbling in Tipperary. They'd gone very quiet themselves. You know, no press conference, I think, last week prior to the, prior to the game. You heard Damon O'Shea's, I think, his comments before the match, right, that yeah. Limerick were beginning to have a bit of a party, you know, and in behind it all, he knew his guys were ready. They knew they were going into battle. They were going to be very determined. But they were actually very disciplined. I said at the start of the game last year, they allowed Limerick into the game by being aggressive but giving away a stupid freeze that, that kept the, the scoreboard ticking over for Limerick. This time round it was totally different. Uh, it was like Daly mentioned about uh, the duck, uh, shooting the duck in the first match, right? You know, <laughs> The goose was really, really cooked here on the basis of that first half performance <clears> because <throat> the goals they got were just phenomenal. I mean, 2-12 we mentioned at halftime, 2-11 from play. It was probably one of the best first half hurlings we've seen for a while. I mean, striking, their, 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 their decision making, yeah. it was top class from a team. But the prevailing demon, the familiar demons that I, I mentioned about Tip came back for a period in the second half when they went for a long period without scoring. Hold those thoughts because we're going to get some reaction from the Tipperary manager. Eamon is with Claire. Eamon O'Shea, congratulations. Shane McGrath told us out there how the players really wanted to do it, not just for themselves, but for you. How important uh, is this today? Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm the least important person in this, to be honest. And the players just, I think they were, they were due a game like that. They worked really hard the last nine weeks. And, uh, you know, we had a good league and uh, we had a good lead into the day and we were very determined coming down. And uh, so that's, I think, one of the reasons we, we got over the line here. How important was it for you to, to send out a message today? I know the messages we try to send out are internal rather than external. You know, we work away and we try to do the best we can. We work away and that's, that's about it. You know, we, we've long stop caring about the outside world. I suppose there was a lot made of the fact that Limerick had beaten you the last two years, that you hadn't won a game uh, in the Munster Championship as a manager. Did that bother you at all? No, no, it didn't bother me. You know, the fact that you lose to Limerick twice, but we, we were lost to two. Limerick are a really strong team and just said to TJ, you know, it's very early in the season and, uh, you know, we showed last year that uh, you can come back. This is a long road. 
and it's a little still be a long road for us. So you know, we're we're happy today, but uh, you know, there's a lot of hurling to be done between now and September, and uh, for the two teams that'll get there. But we're just happy today, and uh, we're happy to be uh, in the Munster final. Good from your forwards today. Great movement, and, and you got the goals. Yeah, they were they were they were very determined today, you know. And uh, you know, Seamus Cannon leads the line really well, and uh, you know, he's a fantastic player. And uh, you know, I thought all the forwards, you know, uh, and the new guys in there, Jason and Niall, did really well, you know. And uh, you know, that's really pleasing for me because you know, to be honest, the last two years has been a little bit of a transition as well. And we have some really good players, you know, and uh, young players as well. And so we're trying to trying to get a pattern. That uh, is sustainable, and uh, that's what we're hoping for, you know. But you know, we're just happy today. You'll want to go back to, to Croke Park this year as Munster champions, but Waterford stand in the way. They, they got the better of you in the league final, or league semi final a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I look forward to it. It's going to be a great game, a different type of game, you know. And uh, you know, we've actually played them three times this year and failed to beat them. Uh, so it's a big challenge for us, you know. And they're unbeaten, you know. And it's a massive team to come into a Munster final unbeaten. And uh, you saw what the Twenty Ones did. So they're really at top of their game. And uh, you know, it's just another a great challenge, you know. Days like this, and uh, we said, you know, whether you win or lose, you know, to be playing here uh, in this cauldron for those players is just a wonderful experience for them. And uh, you know, we're just we, at the moment we're just pleased that we've won the first round of the Monster Championship. You know, we've been around the block a lot, so we know we know what this means and what it doesn't mean. Thanks a lot, Eamon. Thanks a lot. Okay, Claire. Thanks very much indeed, Jared. They needed to make a statement today, Tipperary. And they did. Right. They made a statement today, and they needed to make it. Go into Limerick, beat Limerick after Limerick beating it for the last two years. But the ultimate statement they need to make is they need to win a trophy, mm -hmm. you know. So they have a chance today, uh, they have the chance the next day now in the Munster final to win the second most important trophy in the championship, which is the Munster championship, right? But it will not be complete until they win the All-Ireland because 2010 was the last time they won the All-Ireland. Now, basically, they have more or less the same panel. There were 521s on that. They're all still involved today. Add in Bubbles and add in James Barry, the fullback. The two midfielders were there, Paddy Stable and all the backs. Most of that team, even though you know we were saying beforehand that a lot of the panel has changed, the core of the team has remained the same over a six or seven year period. Now, one All Ireland for that kind of class that they have is not a great return. So until they win that, Darren, no matter what they do in games like this, until they win that, the Tipperary project or the Eamon O'Shea project will not be complete. Because you can't keep this man happy. Yeah, so no, you you yeah, you today was, was an time. outstanding start. Outstanding. Like we began today talking start. about doubts about Kilkenny and doubts about Tipperary. Yeah. Well, I, we didn't say there were doubts about Tipperary. We said it was a game that they had to win, you know, mm -hmm. going into Limerick. Now, I, 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 mean, I, I, think, I think Tipperary the today will be very, very happy with their performance. Oh, I mean, you no. cannot fault the performance, right? Oh, no, they, no. They, they got to take it on to the next step. I agree with them, yeah, ah, they no. should have got more alerts, right? But today, today's, but, today is all you can judge them on today, oh, no, right? Yes, we know, we didn't issue. know where they are. Oh, now, no, where no, are no. they in your oh, no, view, we're not, we're not, we're not, Well, listen. How it, strong it, are they? Everybody this evening. What, what did most observers say this evening? We're waiting till September. Yeah. Who will we have in September? Ask anybody out there. They'll say Tip and Kilkenny. It may not turn out that way. You know, a lot of twists and turns between now and the first Sunday in September. Today, they were just magnificent, especially their forwards, I thought, were absolutely outstanding. There are times when they get a little mm -hmm. bit casual. You know, before half time, yes. they start giving away easy freeze, letting Limerick back into the game. After half time, for that 12 or 13, 14 minutes before they got a score again. So they have these valley periods. The one thing was that Limerick didn't take advantage yeah. of that valley period, even though they got chances. They, not alone to draw, but they could have got ahead, ahead at that time. Now, when they didn't, and, and Tip got the next score, or got the next three or four scores, you knew after that that the tide had come in again and Limerick were gone. OK, guys, thanks very much indeed. We've uh, a lot to uh, reflect on. We can have, we've done quite well and got back to almost level. And, you know, kind of very shortly after that, four and four points down. So we conceded goals at bad times. And, I mean, the first half of the second goal was kind of a sucker punch as well. And obviously to go in six down at half time and playing with the win in the first half was disappointing. So I didn't play well enough in the first half. And on the, on the day, better team won. I suppose there was a lot made of the fact that Limerick had beaten you the um, you know, there was no great um, hoo-ha about them, no media interviews, but it was nice and quietly. They had been away for a few training camps and um, they came out. And after the first few minutes, all right, you were a bit a, a bit worried, but having looked at their performance and their movement up front days, right, and Limerick just weren't at the same pitch of the game. Now, you'd be a small bit worried, if, like, if you were able to share the first 15 minutes. I think they got a bit sloppy when, you know, when it looked as if they were, they should have been driving on. They were a bit sloppy the first 15 minutes. Limerick, you know, they tore back into it, but you have to say that tip of quality all through, mm -hmm. and it's just Limerick was just one good enough, as TJ Ryan said.
Brendan, I asked you earlier, uh, when they talk about Eamon O'Shea not having won a Munster Championship game, does that put pressure on players? And you said no. No, it doesn't because, like, from we were involved with Eamon back in 2008 up until he left in after one day All Ireland in 10. I mean, he's he's a real, I suppose, father figure to the group. Now it's the third year in his project, and um, players don't want to let him down. So you'll see a, a really angry Tipperary team today, I think, and it really expressed themselves in the hurling. The fight they showed in Limerick was great. I, I was just before the game started, just watching Eamon talking with Claire. You know, he was very focused, one line answers. There was no talk about we're coming here to perform, it was, yeah. we're here to win. Yeah, you know, this kind of thing. So, I mean, his team was very, very focused. And, and like Joan said, the poor start to Tip got in the first half, and even into the second half, they responded with score and bursts, and, and really the pressure they put on Limerick was just too much from today. You said one of the areas that impressed you most was how Tip used the ball. Yeah, Tip had a, a great quality. Once they had fought very hard, you know, every player in the Tipperary team is charged with trying to make something happen during the game. And it's really important to, to the way Eamon wants the thing to be played around the place. So, you know, you had guys moving the ball around and, and trying their very best, you know, to, to try to put pressure on Limerick. And, and the Let's movement, have a look at it, yeah. Yeah, moving of the, the moving of the ball up the pitch is, is key. And the one piece we'll, we'll look at, um, Conor O'Brien, who's playing cornerback, gives the ball up to Kieran Bergen. Now, Kieran looks up and puts the ball in in front of Bubbles, but the key people to look at here here are Jason Ford. Jason Ford lets the Limerick defender in, look at the swivel on the run to change the angle, took the Limerick defender out of the game and put the ball over the bar. So it just showed the movement, you know, mm. and, and of the team. Now again, we highlight Seamus Cannon, like he gave Richie an awful time with today, but Shamey is moving in towards the goal to make room outside. But the important thing then is delivery. Brendan Maher identifies the space in front of Shamey, takes the Limerick spare man out mm. of the game then. Shamey's isolated with Richie, was the last place Richie wants to be, and then Shamey takes his point with a Bit of, with a bit of ease. And then after that we have the, the real quality and the heat of battle. When the ball comes in, we see Bonner Mare. It looks like it just took a, a lucky deflection, but watch him never touch the ball in his hand, rolls it off to Jason Ford and just sticks in the back of the net. So it was real, real quality hurling from Tipperary today. Everybody was charged with making something happen and they tic tac the ball when it was needed and Limerick really struggled with their style of play. All right, John, illustrate to us where you saw the contrast between the sides and where Tip were so much better. I suppose first of all, Des, if you look at it, I mean, Limerick pride themselves on work rate and, you know, getting into the mounts, the, the, the opposition and, you know, forcing turnovers, forcing mistakes, whatever else. But they weren't at that, they weren't at that pitch today, right? And there was a big contrast in, that, in the work rate and there was also a big contrast in mistakes. Tip made mistakes last year and, um, you know, this is, this is the goal from, from, from Callan. Um, you know, as, as, and, uh, and a great goal, but that would have come. You now, Keane Inch has the ball here. He comes right back from corner forward for this. So, obviously, that's a plan. He just belts the ball forward to nobody, right? And, uh, you know, there was Declan Hannon was free, uh, Paddy O'Brien was free. And here, this is, I think, illustrates it best of all, this. Paddy Ma actually walks out there with the ball, right? David Breen was near him, um, you know. No they, pressure. No pressure whatsoever. And tip move it down. Shane McGrath got it, no pressure on him. And then Jim McCarthy comes out and makes the fatal mistake of trying to catch it. You know, when you're coaching full backs, you say, like, look, play the percentage. You would see it here, Richie puts his hand out for it, right? No, no full back likes that much space in front of him, but he does. He's out in front, puts out his hand for it. And misses it. And you're coaching for Baxter just to stop it with the hurley, and he'd have been away with the ball. But you know, mm. little things like that. And Limerick had that going for them last year. Tip made the mistakes last year, two crucial mistakes that cost them the match, really. Paddy Mar dropped the ball and four under the ball with a couple of minutes to go. Like where Tip didn't make those mistakes there, but as I said earlier, a bit sloppy in the first 15 minutes. If you're you know, if you're being really pernickety, yeah. which managers are, you'll be looking at that and saying that has to improve before Waterford. And Brendan, what about Limerick and recovering from this now? I would say that like there's nobody going to be sound to death in Limerick hurling after this evening. Eamon O'Shea summed it up well. Like last year, Tipperary left Hurlis, having been beaten in another tight match, and the question marks were over them. Found themselves in the qualifiers against Galway and came back. The draw tomorrow will obviously be very key to a lot of teams that are inside in the bowl, yeah. but nobody, I think, will want to play Limerick. And, and TJ Ryan's charges will, charges will have a huge say in this championship yet. This is the team, remember last year, who ran Kilkenny above in Croke Park in that semi final. Yeah. You know, so they'll be a little bit angry. They'll have really learned, I think, after, after today's game. And they They'll bring that lessons with them into the next round of the qualifiers.
All right then, it's man of the match time. Who who are you going for? Yeah, look, we, we look first of all at um, Seamus Callan. Um, you know, he was accurate again on the freeze today, contributed 2 5 to the Tipperary cause. You know, and Shamey, like, you never see Richie McCarthy have never been taken off, you know, just showed how well um, Shamey's playing today. Then we looked at John Bubbles the wire. Um, Bubbles had scored the free taking, got a point, scored six points in play, but again, danced around the field, used his wrist, and, and Limerick put a man to man marker and Seamus Hickey on him, and that was the test, and he seemed to have passed the test today on that. And finally, looked at Padraig Maher, a rock really. At centre back, you know he inspired those around yeah. him at the back, and you know so Paddy is deserving of a nomination as well. Okay, and who gets it? Um... Well, Shimmy Callum was off the field for for a while. There was a whisker between himself and, and Bubbles the Wire, but we gave the Bubbles the Wire. I mean, quality performance. There's two superb points from this from the side, and he was on maybe one of Limerick's better defenders, Seamus Hickey, and he gave him a run around, which was a big psychological link for Tip. Okay, is he is he called Bubbles or, or John in Killinall? Depends if you call him John tonight anyway after yeah, yeah. Mad Match, you well, John. Well, well, we'll call him John anyway. Congratulations, <laughs> John. John. Let's hear what he had to say afterwards to Claire. <laughs> but John, I suppose this one was built up as a game that Tipperary couldn't lose. Well, Tip and Limerick has always built up as a massive game. Like, you know, the last two years, Limerick came, beat us, beat us at home in Seton Stadium. And people saying that Limerick aren't a good team. Limerick are a, a savage team. Like, do you know, they showed last year, dollar in semi-final against Kilkenny, puck of ball away from winning. They showed against us last year and the year before as well. So we knew coming down here that was going to be a, a tough, tough game. I think the scoreline maybe might have flattered us a bit as Limerick in the first 15 minutes, second half, came back at us. But look, we pulled away again and we came down here for a win and we're, we're delighted with that. Well, uh, congratulations. You are the Liberty Insurance RTE Man of the Match and Kevin O'Sullivan from Liberty is well, here with your reward. Very much. Congratulations.